It starts with a bang. How diesel engines make power. We figured out in the last video that the heart of diesel power is wrapped up in one word. Explosion. Figure out how to start an explosion and then direct it to turn an axle or a shaft and you've got power. The question is, how do you start an explosion? It sounds like a pretty dicey proposition, doesn't it? Well, let's look back at Dr. Diesel's formula for a second. He was proposing to generate an explosion by mixing air and something we've been calling atomized oil. So what is atomized oil? Well, to atomize something is to change its molecular structure so that it can be sprayed. An old school perfume bottle was called an atomizer. It simply mixed air with a liquid substance to thin it enough to make it sprayable. With petroleum, this is accomplished with heat. Take a barrel of petroleum and heat it up enough and you start reshaping its properties at a molecular level. Literally with petroleum, as you heat it up, some of the molecules thin enough to be captured and sprayed. Dr. Diesel was proposing to heat up petroleum to the point where it could be sprayed into his cylinder, mixed with air, and exploded. Today, we could substitute the term atomized oil for diesel fuel or biodiesel or any of several substances that will readily explode inside a diesel engine. Okay, fair enough. We're going to spray combustible oil and air into a cylinder. But what actually causes the explosion? Well, believe it or not, heat. It starts when we pump air and combustible oil into the cylinder. At a molecular level, this mixture floats inside the cylinder chamber. And of course, the cylinder is airtight. So as the piston moves up, it reduces the amount of room available for this mixture of air and fuel. And when the same amount of air and fuel has to exist in a shrinking space, it gets crowded, or what we would call compressed. As it gets compressed, the molecules bump into one another harder and harder, and that generates friction. And friction, of course, in turn generates heat. So you put the mixture under enough pressure, high enough levels of compression, and it heats up very quickly. Get it hot enough, and guess what happens? That's right. Kaboom. It explodes. And when it explodes, it triggers that force we were talking about in the earlier video. Closed up tight inside the cylinder, the piston can only move one way, in the direction away from the explosion. In common terms, we would say it moves down. As it moves away with the force of the explosion, it spins that crank-shaped shaft to its full extent, all the way to the bottom. It's carrying so much force that it spins its way around the full rotation of the shaft. That, in turn, sends it heading right back up toward the explosion it just created. And what does it find then? Well, it just set off a tiny explosion, right? Sort of like lighting a match. And if you lit a match, what would you find immediately after? Well, you'd find smoke, or as we might call it today, exhaust. And that's exactly what the piston finds as it hurdles back up the cylinder. Now, that smoke obviously inhibits the quality of any explosions that might follow. It has to be cleared out of the way before the engine can make another explosion. So as the piston travels up the cylinder, it pushes the exhaust out of the space. Then, once it's traveled all the way back to the top, it turns again on the crank-shaped shaft and heads toward the bottom. As it leaves, as it descends, it pulls in another dose of air and fuel mixture into the cylinder chamber travels all the way to the bottom, spins on the shaft, and as it heads back up, it begins to compress the air and fuel mixture, and the whole process starts all over again. And those are the four strokes of the four-stroke engine. Every time the piston travels its full length, we count one stroke. So the compression stroke occurs when the piston presses the fuel and air mixture. That creates the explosion, which pushes the piston away with brand new velocity, which we call the power stroke. The exhaust stroke occurs when the piston pushes the smoke out of the chamber, and the intake stroke occurs when the chamber is filled with more air and fuel. It's pretty cool, but let's stop and think about this for a minute. We just set off one explosion and created four full piston strokes. It's impressive, but it seems like a lot of motion for just one explosion. If you recall from the video about Dr. Diesel's engine, there came a time when, when customers, the ship owners of the day, came back to Dr. Diesel and his engineers and demanded a more efficient solution. This is exactly what they were talking about. The four-stroke engine simply sheds too much power as it works its way through that entire cycle. Dr. Diesel's team 
was presented with the challenge to take this basic four-stroke equation and make it more efficient. So that brings us to a good question. If you were presented with this challenge, what would you do? Well, the first thing you might do is figure out what are constant and what are variable factors. In other words, you might want to know what will remain the same no matter what we do to increase the engine's efficiency. And no matter what we do to create efficiency, we're still trying to do the same basic process. We're still trying to use the force from an explosion to turn an axle. So what remains constant? Well, the cylinder is going to remain constant, the piston and its connected rod, the flammable mix of fuel and air, the exhaust, and the crank-shaped shaft. Those things are not going to change. So what can change? Well, the way they're arranged in the engine can change and the timing in which everything happens. In other words, there are things that can be reshaped while still keeping the fundamental equation. So Dr. Diesel's engineers thought about the problem and they came up with a solution that, frankly, engineers have been tweaking on ever since. In essence, they changed the place the air is moved into the cylinder and the timing or the moment when the exhaust is removed. It's kind of ingenious, really. As they honed Dr. Diesel's engine, they realized that the air and the atomized oil, or flammable fuel, don't have to be mixed until they're in the cylinder. That means the air and the fuel mix can be introduced from two different places, as long as they can mix in time to create heat. And likewise, it doesn't really matter how or when the exhaust leaves the engine, as long as it's gone in time for the next explosion. So let's take a look at how they change the engine configuration, and in the process, we'll be able to lock on to how the two-stroke diesel works. So let's walk through this power cycle again, and what you're going to notice is that a lot of these steps look very familiar. As we did before, we're going to move the piston toward the top of the airtight cylinder to create compression and heat on the mix of air and flammable fuel. And just as before, we're going to create an explosion, and the force of that explosion is going to send the piston flying in the opposite direction. And exactly as it did before, the piston's connected rod is going to turn the crank-shaped shaft as it moves. But this time, as the piston travels down, it's going to uncover an air intake, literally, holes in the cylinder where air can be forced into the chamber. The air whooshes in, and as the piston reaches the very end of its stroke, or the bottom, its exhaust valves open mechanically. So as it's pushing its way back up the cylinder, it forces out the exhaust, and then the exhaust valves quickly snap closed. As it travels up the cylinder, it covers the air intake holes, so the air that was forced into the engine is trapped inside the airtight cylinder. The flammable fuel is injected, mixes with the air just as the piston is making its way back to the top, creates that same combustion, generates heat, and boom! another explosion, and the cycle starts all over again. Only in this case, we're getting an explosion on every stroke. So one explosion, one full revolution of the crank-shaped shaft, and two piston strokes. Much more efficient. By combining a change in the place where the air is inducted into the engine and the time when the exhaust is removed, Dr. Diesel's engineers created a revolution in power making that endures to this day. So from now on, when somebody talks about two-stroke versus four-stroke, just remember it's not about mixing gas and oil. It's all about efficiency, getting more power out of each piston stroke. Does that make sense? Good. We're going to conclude this lesson with two terrific classic videos originally produced by General Motors. Check out what a great job they do of explaining internal combustion in the first one, and then pointing out the differences between two and four stroke power in the second. When you click on these videos, this video, the one you're watching now, should pause. However, with some systems you may need to pause the video manually. No worries, you can always come right back and finish this video when you're done. When you've completed all these videos, you'll be ready to move on to Unit 3, where we'll take a closer look at the individual components diesel engines use to make power.